Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. My subscribers, my family, the remnant family, I give thanks for you. Thanks for the support that I've been getting, you know, those who have been communicating, you know, in the comment section, those who have been assisting me. I really give God thanks for the help, you know. The Lord is good. The Lord is awesome. The Lord is great. I really appreciate you all on this channel. And so continue to share the videos, you know, continue to subscribe and continue as always. And this is my, the part that I really look forward to the most is those who will comment, you know, say something back to me in the comment section. Um, on today's video, I want to talk to you uh, about um, you know, as far as it goes back to, you know, education in a biblical sense. Let's see how far we can go back to knowledge and, you know, where we can find in the world where education started concerning God and concerning truth. I want to uh, share something also with you that the Lord has revealed to me. And to connect the, my previous video um, about the system. And so sit back and um, I hope that you will enjoy this video. And I hope that you will be edified at the end of the day. Bless the name of Jesus. Um, where things have started, how far can I go back in the world? I believe I'll go back to the time of Noah. Um, let me take it a bit back further. Knowledge was um, recorded in a book. Not gonna call it name at this time, its name. But the fallen ones, when they came in the days of Noah, they shared knowledge with man. Um, they communicated knowledge with Enoch. Um, it was angels who taught men um, steelwork, how to make things out of metal, steel, and um, spears and swords and knives, and all these things were made out of um, angelic knowledge that was taught to, ma to mankind. Um, Studying the stars, um, um, science and all these things. A lot of this knowledge was taught to man by the fallen ones who came on earth. You know, the apparition of the moon and all these things. Um, all these things are knowledge that was imparted to man through angels. Now many of you by this time are going to be wondering, where do I get those stuff from? Um, but I'll send you to a book at the end of the channel, so you at the end of the video, so you can um, revisit or you can look at it for yourself. And so, the fallen ones when they came, they taught man. So it was not just Lucifer who had a gift in heaven, which was music, but angels that was a part of his kingdom, a part of his system. Um, angels who, who are, should I say, yeah, they were cast out. Yes, they also had giftings too. And they taught a lot to humanity. Now, did humans, human beings, did they use it all for good? No. The more that they were taught by the fallen ones. Is the more the world became more evil and more violent. The more swords were made, the more spears were made, arrows. The world became more and more bloody. Um, and so you have good knowledge and you have bad knowledge. You have good teaching and you have bad teaching. Um... When you also look at the men of God, the holy men of God, Noah, 
Still talking about his time. Let's go all the way back there. Noah got his teaching from Enoch and Methuselah. Again, many will be wondering, where did you get your material from? But Noah was taught at the feet of Enoch and Methuselah. And um, when these men died and they left Noah, Noah continued that impart, imparting of knowledge to others. Abraham, Abraham was born in Tira's, um, Tira was his father. Abraham was born in the time of King Nimrod. King Nimrod um, was a pagan. He was a Satanist. He, he, he did not have anything to do with God. He and his mother, who was also his wife, King Nimrod. Um, and so, I believe the goddess Ishtar, Nimrod's wife, his mother, and so, Tira was one of the lieutenants, the, the generals of King Nimrod. And um, they believed in worshipping idols. Um, they were idol, idol worshippers. And so, Abraham was born in a time when, 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 you know, the earth was so sinful and, you know, wicked and, you know, full of idolatry. And so, Abraham was blessed because he was a chosen vessel. I'm not going to go into detail with the story of Abraham. But Abraham was so blessed that he was, he found Noah. And for all who don't know, Noah was the teacher. Noah was the one who imparted the knowledge, the ways of God to Abraham. And funny enough, when Abraham got Isaac, his son, the chosen son, he sent back Isaac to the feet of Noah also to be taught the ways of the Lord. Funny enough, when Isaac grew up and he got the twins, Esau and Jacob, he sent both to find Noah also. To be taught the ways of the Lord. But um, Esau didn't go. But Jacob sat at the feet of Noah also. So by now you should be understanding that. While Abraham was around, Noah was still alive. While, um, um, while Isaac was born and grown up to have sons for himself. Noah was still alive. And Noah was like the college. Noah was like the learning institution for the first set of holy men of God after the flood. And I just wanted to point that out. The importance of being taught, not by Edens, the, important, the importance of being taught, not by the ungodly, but to be taught by holy men of God who love the Lord and who love the ways of the Lord. And so based on who school Abraham, we all know the story of Abraham. Based on who school Isaac, we know the lifestyle of Isaac. Based on who school Jacob, we also know the end product of Israel. In his pilgrim journey. Who educate you. Is very important. Who you take teaching from. Who you take. Who you seek knowledge from. Bless the name of Jesus. Because you have good knowledge. And you have bad knowledge. Good teaching. Bad teaching. Just wanted to point that out. Um, so. When. We look at it. We can understand the importance of 
who really pass on knowledge unto you is paramount. That's the name of Jesus. We're living in a time when the world has become so corrupt. We're living in a time when even the church has become so, has fallen to a level of backslidden state where it's hard to trust. It's hard to trust. Let me, can I be real with you? There are good pastors out there, genuine pastors. There are genuine preachers out there, men and women of God who love God. But at the end of the day, let us not be naive. You have even the more deceptive, hirelings, wolves in sheep clothing. And so, if I should give an advice to my subscribers and my viewers, is that let us rely more than the Holy, more on the Holy Spirit more than any man at this time. The arms of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust even your own. We are living in a time where we have to position ourselves to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling before God. Save yourself. Save yourself. And so, if you have a relationship with your pastor, more than God, you're in trouble. Be careful. Bless the name of Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit is my teacher. And I want to just share what the Holy Spirit revealed to me recently. Very important. And is that I was in my bed. Um, late last year I was in my bed. Line after, after we had house church. And I, I, I was in bed getting some rest that Sunday evening. And um, my wife was watching something on the phone, a video, about people getting joke, people that was stick with that thing. Um, and I asked her, which one are they getting it in? And she said, they are getting it in their left hand. And I lied there. And I heard the voice of the Lord says to me, believers, who tell you that your right hand is your right hand? Let me repeat that. The Lord says to me that Sunday, who tells you that your right hand is your right hand? And I was like, and eventually the Lord started to speak to me. I lied there and I was still in his presence. And I heard the Lord believe us. And I'm not lying to you. He says, Any side that your heart is on, that's the right side of your body. That's what the Lord says to me. Through his Holy Spirit. Let me repeat. He says, Any side that your heart is on is the right side of your body. And the Spirit of the Lord continued to minister to me. Why do you think that it is written that the Son of Man is now seated at the right hand of God? He says to me, it's because it's the closest point to his heart. The Lamb is seated at the right hand of God the closest point to the heart of God bless the name of Jesus so the question is who tell us that our right hand is our right hand and our left hand is our left hand when I shared it with my mom my mom became very cautious she said son I'm hearing you and my mom she knows my integrity she know, I don't, she know I don't make up stuff. If the Lord don't speak, I don't say. But yet still, my mom, this thing has become, it, it, it was so weird that she says, son, I would, I would advise you, I would advise you, please, even when you go on the street as an evangelist, don't share this in the street. 
my mom became worried of what people are going to think of her son. I don't know how, you know, people are going to be receiving this. So she said, I would advise you not to share it. And lo and behold, about a month after, one day I was at my house and my mom came. No, she was, she was not here in Jamaica, but she came now. And while she was on the island, she said to me, um, Son, the Lord spoke to me. The Lord gave me a word. And I have to share this word with you. She said, you remember when you told me about the right hand? And the right side of the body? I said, yes, mom. She said, you know that it's in the word? I said, no, mom, I've never seen it in the word. And she says, son, I was reading my Bible. And in Ecclesiastic 10 verse 2, she said, read it for yourself, son. It says that a wise man's heart is on his right, but a foolish man's heart, heart is on his left. Let me repeat that. You can read it for yourself. Ecclesiastic 10 verse 2. A wise man's heart is on his right, but a foolish man's heart is on his left. How many of us in the body of Christ and how many of us throughout the world in the eyes of God is foolish? Foolish to believe that our heart is on the left side. It's not my word. It's what the Lord says in his word. Read it for yourself. Ecclesiastic 10 verse 2. And talk back to me in the comment section. Bless the name of Jesus. But why do you think that the entire world was deceived with this knowledge? Why were we educated? Now the question must be, why were we educated? Why were we programmed to think that our heart is on the left side of our body. That our left hand is on the side where the heart is. Why were we programmed to think like that? Or to believe that? When the Holy Spirit reveals everything. It's because this is going to be one of the greatest deception to man. And it's an ingredient to make it so easy for the end game where the devil is concerned. Why do I say that? He had was to deceive the world from the beginning to believe that. So that when this time came, when people read Revelation 13, Verse 16. And they shall receive a mark in their right hand. And when the body of Christ is looking and everything that is taking place is on the so-called left, as they taught us, then it's going to be easy for apostles and pastors and bishops to say to their congregation and to the world, that this cannot be it because John says right hand. And so the question is, who tells you that your right hand is your right hand and your left hand is your left hand? Who tell you? It's great deception. And that's why I keep repeating in my videos, Revelation 19 verse 20 that the antichrist and the false prophet will be cast into the lake of fire for deceiving the world everything that will plunge humanity into destruction why the people of god will perish 
is because of rejecting knowledge and is because of giving in to strong delusion, deception. And so I just wanted to share that. I'm not going to make this video very long. What the Lord revealed to me. And don't believe that this knowledge is not important. You know why? Because if it wasn't important for the science, whenever you go to where you go to receive what you receive, the hand that they do it with would not matter. Whatever they, if you go this side, it would matter. If it wasn't important. If you said, okay, this one, it would matter if it was important. If it wasn't important. But it's a reason why it's on a particular side of the body. The word of God must be fulfilled. And if Revelation 13 verse 16 says, the right hand, it has to be the right hand. But the world, yeah, the world is under deception. There is great deception clothing the earth. And a lot of people have been misguided to think that these things are happening just now. But the devil has been working for centuries now to make sure that the end product will be successful for his kingdom, for his system. But the word of God says, what is in the dark will come to light. So I pray that this video will bring light, oh God, to those who follow my channel. And I pray that you will share it, share it, share it. I've never gotten over 12 thumbs up. But I'm not in it for the thumbs up. I've never gotten... Ah, 50, 50 comments. If, I, if it was for the comments, I wouldn't be here today. I don't know what it's like to have 200 subscribers. But the numbers is not the numbers. I have to do what the Lord would have me to do. And the Lord wants me to edify his people. And I just want to share with you. And I pray that you will be Strengthen in truth. The belt of truth is very important. We are to put on the armor of God at this time. The entire armor is needed. The helmet is needed. The breastplate of righteousness is needed. The shield of faith is needed. The sword, the sword of the spirit is needed. Ah, our feet shod with the gospel. The preparation of the gospel of peace is very important. But let us never forget the belt of truth. The loins must be guarded with the belt of truth. So try and think back. <laughs> if you can for me. And find out who did tell you. That your right hand is your right hand. And your left hand is your left hand. God bless you.